Introducing Propel, the new wave in advanced orthodontics. The Propel device is a patented, FDA-registered medical device specifically designed to create microosteoperforations. Microosteoperforations cause a localized inflammatory response, increasing blood flow and cytokine. By increasing the cytokines in the area of desired movement, bone remodeling activity greatly increases, and therefore the rate of tooth movement increases as well. While applying any type of orthodontic force, microosteoperforations harness the body's own biological response to increase the rate of bone remodeling. The Propel device can be used in conjunction with any fixed or removable orthodontic appliance to treat a multitude of different malocclusions, including, but not limited to, molar uprighting, space closures, rotations, intrusions, and extrusions. The area in which you plan to treat with Propel should be evaluated for root inclination and anatomical landmarks. Combining manual palpation with the evaluation of a current radiograph will determine the best location to make three microosteoperforations with the Propel device. The second step of the Propel treatment is to have the patient rinse twice with chlorhexidine. Each rinse should last for one minute. Prior to performing Propel, the patient should be anesthetized with either a compounded topical anesthetic or by local infiltration. There is no need to perform a block. The Propel device is disposable and packaged sterile and intended for a single patient visit. You may easily perform as many microosteoperforations as desired during that one visit. The Propel device has three adjustable depth settings, which are 3, 5, and 7 millimeters. The correct depth should be selected based upon the thickness of the gingiva and alveolar bone in the desired treatment area. In the anterior region, 3 or 5 millimeters is generally sufficient, and 5 or 7 millimeters is often used in the posterior. The depth is selected by rotating the gauge located at the top of the device until the desired depth number lines up with the arrow. The retractable sleeve is designed to minimize soft tissue impact and will move when the device is used to assist in keeping the tissue taut. An LED indicator light will illuminate when you have reached the pre-selected depth. With one hand, use your fingers to hold the tissue taut. With your other hand, grip the Propel device so that the knob is positioned in your palm. Place your fingertips on the grooved section of the Propel device. With the knob of the device placed firmly in your palm, use your fingertips to rotate the device clockwise while applying slight pressure at first to engage the device. Continue rotating the device until you reach the preset depth or until the leading micro edge has passed through the cortical plate and entered the cancellous bone. You should feel resistance diminish once the leading micro edge has crossed through the cortical plate. Wherever clinically possible, three microosteoperforations should be made mesial and distal to each tooth in which advanced movement is desired. Root anatomy and proximity dictates the number of microosteoperforations performed in each area. The depths should be selected based on the estimated thickness of the gingiva and bone palpated during evaluation. If a root is inadvertently perforated, studies show that it should heal without any consequence. The buccal surface is the easiest and most accessible location to perform Propel. Adjacent teeth within a 10 millimeter radius of the Propel site, which is approximately a tooth and a half, will achieve the highest stimulated effect. Assure the device has passed through the cortical plate by very gently applying backward resistance. To remove the device, rotate the device counterclockwise. Where possible, depending on roof proximity, three microosteoperforations in either a linear or triangular pattern should be made mesial and distal to each tooth in which advanced movement is desired. However, one or two microosteoperforations are acceptable in areas where three are not anatomically possible. Immediately after the procedure, minor bleeding may occur in some patients. Simply apply pressure with gauze for 30 seconds. The Propel device is designed designed to be easily disposed and can only be used with one patient. Discard Propel into a designated sharps container after treatment. You have now successfully completed Propel. With microosteoperforation, patients have more predictable and faster tooth movements. The average patient may need only one Propel to achieve the desired result. However, additional Propel applications may be made every six to eight weeks to maximize the benefit of the cytokine stimulation. After receiving Propel, patients can resume their normal routine without any dietary or activity restrictions. However, the patient should avoid any non-steroidal anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen, Advil, or Aleve. If the patient should have any discomfort, acetaminophen is the only approved medicine. 
Why should I use Propel? Propel is the latest and most innovative advanced orthodontic option available. How many microosteoperforations are needed? Where possible, depending on root proximity, three microosteoperforations should be made mesial and distal of each tooth in which movement is desired. However, one or two microosteoperforations are acceptable in areas where three are not anatomically possible. What type of anesthesia is recommended? Either a compounded topical anesthetic or local infiltration is recommended. There is no need to perform a block. When should Propel be initiated? Propel is for patients actively in or about to begin orthodontic treatment with brackets and wires, aligners, or any other fixed or removable orthodontic appliance. How frequently should Propel be performed? The microosteoperforations go into effect after a single Propel treatment. In some patients, depending on the complexity of the case, clinicians may choose to repeat Propel at six to eight week intervals. Which perforating depths should be selected? During evaluation, the intended treatment area should be palpated to assess the thickness of the gingival and alveolar bone. This estimation should allow you to gauge whether three, five, or seven millimeters is required. The leading micro edge should cross through the cortical plate and enter into the cancellous bone. In the anterior region, three or five millimeters is generally sufficient, and five or seven millimeters is often used in the posterior.